Hello friends, today I'm going to show how we actually get the link from the products list in the web view by injecting the JavaScript and then we're going to pass the link from the web view to the Android native method so that we can scrap the detail page and display back in the native view. And this is the final result that we can click the products item in the web view and then it's going to show the detail page of the products in the native app. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, for the first of all, before we start over the syntax and what we're going to do right now, let's talk a little bit about the flow that we're gonna work on it. We will inject the JavaScript code inside the web page when it is completely loaded in our web view. So the JavaScript code is gonna grab the link from each of these product when we click on it. And then we're gonna get those links via the JavaScript bridge into the function in Android app. So that we're gonna use that link to extract the data from the detail page. Okay? And now we're going to open up the browser and we go to the GSM Arena website. Then we go to any products. So let's say uh, the Samsung's product list. And we will get these products which are our phone display in here. So before we go to actually Java code, we're gonna test on this website first. So we're going to inspect the element to test whether our JavaScript is get the selector is correct or not before we place those script within our web view. So now let's press the F12 or just right click on the empty space in the browser to open up the inspect element tab. And we're going to press on here to toggle all the mobile view type mode. And then we have to refresh the page once again to submit the new user agent. Okay. And now uh, we can select all these elements because it's contain the links that we want. So let's go to the console tab and type the JavaScript code. Let's say a document dot query selector all. And then we're gonna put the CS selector, which is uh, the ID you can see here, equal to the list dash brand. And then we're gonna get the URL element and then a lie. And this will return all the elements a lie as the collections. We can see the number nodes list in here. You can see that. So then we're gonna set those into a variable. And then the next step, we're gonna extract the links from the XML, which is contained in a ref attribute and change it to the undefined primitive value. The reason that we change this a ref value because we don't want the web page to navigate to another page. Instead of that, we're gonna display the data in activity net to Android app. And then we're gonna add new onclick attributes to fire a function. And now we're gonna loop all of those with the for each. First parameter is gonna be element and index. And then each of these elements contain a element. So we have to select a element. And then we add one more attribute on click with another function JavaScript. So let's call Android click. And this we're gonna write in the string template. And inside that we're going to uh, take the link from the href attribute. So to get a value from the attribute, we're gonna call a element dot get attribute, and then the attribute name. Okay. About this Android click function, we're gonna create it later on. So just give it. And then we're gonna change a ref value into this. And we call this undefined primitive value. And this code could prevent to load the new page when we click on it. But this is what we want. And now we're gonna create JavaScript functions that we say a moment. Let's say our function, Android click, and the parameter which is a link. 
And inside this, we're gonna call the methods that we're gonna create later on in the Java class. So let's say uh, js dot get link, and we're gonna pass the link inside that parenthesis. A js in here is the JavaScript interface name that we're gonna set from the Java in Android. By the way, hope you guys not confused between the Java and the JavaScript. That is two different languages, okay? And a get link is the methods that we're gonna create in Android later on. Again, it is connected between the JavaScript and the Android app. So just ignore it a moment because we want to test this first if it works as we expect. Now let's just press enter and then we're gonna check the HTML elements. And now we can see those elements are changed. The href links turn into this value and we have another on click attribute with the functions. And this means our script is work fine. And now we're gonna copy those script and keep it to use later on. Okay, after we test on the JavaScript code, and this time we're gonna implement it in Android projects from scratch. And now we're gonna name this as a GSM Arena. And we're gonna hit finish button. So by default, main activity is a launcher activity that we're gonna place the value in the main layout XML. So for the width and height, we're gonna place it much parent to fill up the screen. And then the ID is gonna be the value. And then let's go to the main activity Java class. We're gonna define a private value object and then on create methods, we're gonna find the value with a reference by ID. And then we're gonna set enable JavaScript to true because we need the JavaScript to execute in that. And then we're gonna set the web view client and put the new instant web view clients to prevent the apps launching at the browser. So when launching the web view successfully, we have to inject the JavaScript that we have test in the browser. That means we're gonna do this when our web view is finished load the page. To do this, we're gonna override the error methods called onPageFinished. Then define a string variable, we're gonna call this script. And then we're gonna copy the script and paste it back. Now we're gonna remove this slash n because the raw JavaScript code there is no syntax like this. Okay, then we're gonna call a method to execute the script, which is called evaluate JavaScript. For this method, it's gonna work only API version more than 18. For lower than this, we're gonna use a method load URL instead. But actually, in Play Store, if you want to publish app, we need SDK level minimum 24, means that we're gonna skip this implement in that case. Okay? So our first parameter, which is gonna be a script, and the callback results is null. We no need to implement that. And then we're gonna load the URL. So let's go to copy that page link and paste it back. And now we're gonna create a class that we're gonna use it for connect between the JavaScript and the Java method that we call a JavaScript bridge. So let's say, a JS. Okay, then the constructor we're gonna define with the context that we're gonna pass it from the activity. And then we're gonna create a method with a parameter called getLink. And the parameter is gonna be a string to store a link. And this get link, remember, we have called that in the JavaScript code, right? So let's toss a message here to check whether we get the link success or not. Now, to be able to call the Java methods in a JavaScript, we have to add 
the annotation at JavaScript interface. Or if you forgot that in the compile time, that's going to be produced an error. And then now we go back to the main activity class. We're going to give instruction to the JavaScript which class and methods that can be called. So let's say a view dot at JavaScript interface. And the first parameter is a Java class, which is a JS. So we're going to instance an object JS and the name here is going to be a JS, which is match with this one in a JavaScript. Now in our app need permission to access the internet. To do this, we're going to go to the Android manifest file and add the element uses Android permission internet. Now we have done the first step. So let's run testing this one. Now the page is loaded. So we're going to click on this element. That should be toss a link. As we can see here. 